This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I'm Michael El Shami. It's a pleasure to host today Dr. Louise Oli Nordkam from the Amsterdam University Medical Center. Um, just for uh, our listeners, Louise has been involved with the SICD technology since the beginning. She was part of the investigators who originally published the Dutch cohort back in 2013 or 2012, I think. And she's obviously part of the AUMC, the Amsterdam University Medical Center, uh, SICD uh, Proterian trial. And you work closely with, with Reynold Knops, and I would like to congratulate you on advancing the field of SICD forward by initiating the randomized trial. So today I listened to your presentation. You presented the Praetorian XL trial, which is an extra four year added to the original Praetorian trial. Can you summarize the trial for us and tell us what the findings are? Yes, of course, yes. It's, uh, so the Praetorian trial was a randomized trial and we randomized patients with just a class one and two A indication for ICD therapy um, to subcutaneous or transvenous ICD. Um, and in the Praetorian trial, we looked at uh, the composite endpoint of inappropriate shocks and complications, but we noticed that complications especially uh, continue to rise during long-term follow-up. So that's why we started the Praetorian XL trial, um, and we looked at these patients for uh, over seven years. Mm. Um, so the median follow-up of the entire cohort was 87.5 months, um, and we looked at device-related complications. So the primary endpoint result was major and minor complications. Um, and that was not significantly different between the subcutaneous and transvenous ICD arm. But when we looked at the major complications only, so those were the complications in which there was an invasive intervention needed, uh, we saw that um, there were more major complications in the transvenous ICD group compared to the subcutaneous ICD group. Um, and also, if we looked at the uh, lead-related complications, we saw that there were more lead-related complications, even three times more in the transvenous ICD group compared to the subcutaneous ICD group. Um, so those, that's actually the primary endpoint result. And there was no difference in mortality or hospitalization for heart failure. Okay, I mean, so the results are very encouraging. And you did mention something that you used the modified intention to treat analysis. Can you comment on this? Yeah, so um, we actually did a modified intention to treat analysis, which, which means that patients who didn't receive a device at all in the beginning of the trial, they were not included in okay. the analysis. So all patients who did receive a device, um, and for example, if they received the transvenous ICD while they were randomized to the subcutaneous ICD arm, um, the patients were analyzed according to the randomization group. So that would be the subcutaneous ICD arm in that case. And what were the most common complications in the SICD cohort? So in the SICD cohort, it was bleeding. Okay. Um, and we included bleeding in which there was an intervention needed. Um, and most of the times it was intervention was hospita a prolonged hospitalization or uh, quitting of the anticoagulation. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but and, and in, in rare cases, it was evacuation of the hematoma. And I saw that you mentioned that almost 20% of or 23% of the SICD complications were in the people who crossed over to, tra to transvenous ICD. Yeah, so this is the, so this is the intention to treat uh, analysis, right? So um, we noticed that looking at all complications, 23% of all complications in the subcutaneous ICD arm was actually uh, when they had a device, um, a, a transvenous ICD device or a biventricular ICD device. So uh, a lot of complications occurred um, in another device type than the patient was randomized to. So now based on, the, on this data, when you approach your patient receiving a primary, simple primary prevention ICD or secondary prevention ICD without need for pacing, how could you advise your patients about the type of the device that they should receive? Yes. In your practice, at least. Yeah, so what we do is we really um, tell the patient about both devices and we tell them all the advantages and all the disadvantages of both devices. We show them the devices um, and we actually let them choose between the subcutaneous or transvenous ICD. Yeah. And of course, in but we will do the sub-analysis in younger patients. Um, uh, but I think for younger patients, we will strongly uh, advise especially to do a subcutaneous ICD. 
Well, I, I would like to thank you for summarizing the trial for us. This was an amazing trial. It took a lot of effort. And to ask patients to follow up for eight years is a big ask as part of a randomized control trial. So congratulations to you and to your team again. And thank you for summarizing the trial to us. Thank you very much. Thank you.